Mary Featherstone. There is the silence of air and space in which breathing is a momentous act and contemplation stretches like a long beach in the sun of limitless horizons. There is the muffled deadness which descends like the padded ceiling of a too small room left windowless to the imagination which can no longer sing. This is a desperate desert pilgrimage. No stones mark the exit from the valley where music is dumb and words fall limp from the trees. Will we ever touch meaning again? When freedom comes, when freedom comes, Will we be capable of walking out to face beyond ourselves the sun that burns and dazzles, the presumption and the poverty of all we thought we knew? Listen as harmony and dissonance converse and rampage in our souls, play havoc with our ritual comfort certainties and call us to the terror of new freedoms, new freedoms, or will we turn away and stumble blind among the ruins of our childhood building blocks, forever numb? imagining we can contain the voice of silence. Jazz pilgrimage is the verbal metaphor 
that Gerald Wilson used for many years to describe his life, his goals, and his mission to the world of jazz. Born on September 4th, 1918, that means he would be 102 tonight because this is his birthday today. Gerald Wilson worked as a jazz trumpeter, big band, band leader, composer, and educator. He also arranged for the bands of Benny Carter, Duke Ellingson, Count Basie, Dizzy Gillespie, and Ray Charles, for which he won the Grammy Hall of Fame Award in 1999. We just heard his Grammy-nominated Theme for Monterey from 1998. He also hosted his own radio show and from 1970 taught a jazz history course at the University of California in Los Angeles where his classes often attracted 400 students. His professional life included 50 years of records under his own name and spun from the swing era of the 1930s to the diverse jazz sounds of the 21st century. He also maintained a marriage of over 50 years with three children and four grandchildren, all of whom have songs composed for them. He considered jazz as his heritage and his biotype, a, a way of living and to be inspired from, or in his words, jazz is a thing that's continually moving. It's a chain of evolution, each little link. In other words, we cannot have the most modern that we have today and not have the ragtime. We cannot have one without the other. It all came in the time. Good evening and welcome to our Jazz Even Song at the American Church in Berlin. I am very uh, thankful to be here tonight with you because this is the last uh, Jazz Even song. And um, it's so good to be together. My name is Pastor Mari Torkelson, pastor of this colorful church. And we are so happy that we can be together. And I want to welcome our guest musicians, Sebastian on drums, and Arnie Janssen is back on the guitar, and our house band, Marcel on bass, and Albrecht up there on the organ, Lauren on cello, and Uva on saxophone, and our guest speaker and musician, Richard McGraith. Welcome to you all. And Lavia Lynn is our, has been our artist in residence, and her painting is up here. It's so beautiful, the blues that she celebrates and paints and uh, her postcards and other things are for sale in this, right behind the seats here, if you'd like to take a look at them, that would be great. And uh, tonight I also want um, to thank all our volunteers. We have people on video, we have people on the sound system, we have people in the back greeting you, our ushers, we have refreshments following the service that uh, are all our wonderful um, church members are hosting you tonight, and please do thank them as you leave tonight. They've been just the best every single night for nine whole weeks. And then I want to um, invite you to offer a donation tonight. Um, we will collect that as you go out. You can feel free to give whatever donation you can, but we would like to suggest 10 euros, or you could give, you know, heck, you could give 50 if you want. You know, I mean, that's how excited you're going to be tonight. You're going to want to give all your money away. Anyway, whatever you can give is just wonderful. And just want you to know there are four toilets in the back. And um, like I said, uh, refreshments will be available. And we're going to have a special party if you want to hang around a little bit and drink some champagne and eat chocolate. You probably won't want to do that. But anyway, if you'd like to enjoy that, you're welcome to join. And our musicians will join you too. And now I would just like to, before we start in with more beautiful music, more beautiful jazz, I want to just read you a, a beautiful, just a short reading. And it is this. There is a quiet light that shines in every heart. Though it is always secretly there, 
It draws no attention to itself. It is what illuminates our minds to see beauty, our desire to seek possibility, and our hearts to love life. This shy inner light is what enables us to recognize and receive our very presence here as blessing. And I read this and I thought of Uwe. He's always in the background. He's always setting everything up. He is the vision for this whole evening. And he doesn't want you to even know he's around. <laughs> but he's right there. <laughs> but anyway, you are such a light in us, along with our wonderful God. You shine that light in all of us. And we thank you for your vision and also for all that you bring out in all of us to give our very best and to sing from our soul. So thank you, Uwe. Thank you. Bring on the jazz.
Thank you, uh, musicians. That was a beautiful introduction. And thank you, Uva and Pastor Mari and the American Church in Berlin for the opportunity tonight of sharing with you a personal reflection on freedom and faith. And hopefully you can understand my Australian accent. Is that okay? <laughs> it's better than my German. Okay. When I was an undergraduate jazz student, in the mid-90s at the Sydney Conservatorium of Music in Australia, a very memorable experience happened to me one day in an improvisation class. One of the classical composition students had asked if he would be allowed to venture into the jazz department and experiment with some of his compositional ideas using some of the jazz students a very brave young man indeed. That was a joke. <laughs> Back in those days, the jazzers, as we were called, and the classical guys were very, very rarely, if ever, spoke with each other, let alone collaborated musically. I hope it's changed now. I'm sure it has. So here we were, the advanced jazz ensemble full of final year Bachelor of Music students and this young man from the composition department in the same room together. The tension was palpable. What was he going to ask of us? Had he brought in copious amounts of sheet music that he expected us to sight read on the spot? None of us jazzers were great readers and the classical guys knew that. Did he want to shame us? What did he think jazz was? Was there going to be any improvisation at all? And if so, what was it going to consist of? Why was this guy here? The tension was broken as he asked us to simply play some free jazz. Great, we thought. We know how to do that. And so we began. We attempted to listen to one another, like always, beginning by making musical statements without necessarily any one person dominating the musical conversation. And we sought to put into practice many of the principles of jazz improvisation that we'd been learning and studying, particularly from the earliest expressions of free jazz, pioneered by pianist Lenny Tristano and saxophonists uh, Warren Marsh and Lee Konitz. The composition student abruptly stopped us after about two minutes in. What are you playing? He almost angrily questioned us. I asked you to play free jazz, you know, like crazy stuff. No rules, atonal, 
No melodies, no rhythms, no nothing, he said. How do you respond to a request like that? It was clear that what was free improvisation for him was completely different in meaning to what free meant for us. I wonder what freedom means for you. On one level, I feel completely inadequate to speak on this subject. Being a white, educated, heterosexual, middle-aged, middle-class Christian male puts me in one of the most privileged and despised categories of the modern Western world. What would I know about real struggle, real discrimination, real oppression? Fair enough question to ask. Nonetheless, I would like to share something. The word freedom implies by its very nature a sense of being released from something burdensome. Freedom can't just exist on its own. My chains fell off. I've been set free, writes the songwriter. We've all heard people say, finally I'm free from that awful job, or I'm so thankful to be free from that abusive relationship, or maybe at last I'm free to get on with my career after caring for my sick, ungrateful uncle, and so on. Certain people groups are demanding freedom, such as the Black Lives Matter movement, to take just one example. Freedom and, and oppression could be understood in our world to be two sides of the one coin called life. And some people seem to have one side of this coin far too often and even unfairly flipped over onto the side of oppression and others to the side of freedom. A songwriter in the Bible wrote in Psalm 119, verse 32, I will run in the way of your commandments, for you set my heart free. I will run in the way of your commandments, for you set my heart free. Do you hear the paradox? Aren't commandments inhibiting to our freedom? Doesn't freedom mean being released from oppressive rules and regulations laid upon us by some dominating and stifling authority? Isn't that what religion is about? Rules, regulations and systems put in place in order to control people? But the psalmist in this massively long song of 176 verses sings with all of his heart about the freedom that he has discovered in delighting in the wisdom of obeying and enjoying God's statutes, commands, teachings, decrees, righteous laws and precepts. He's no slave needing to be set free. Rather, he's the released slave, ready to truly worship God with his whole being. This seems crazy to our modern ears. Isn't true freedom a releasing from all that hinders into a freedom to be who we really are without anyone telling us what that is? That's what the world outside tells me every day. But is that really what freedom is? This songwriter paints an entirely different picture. He delights in the freedom that God gives him as he celebrates the relationship of pure love that God has made possible for him to enjoy. His heart has been set free. How? By knowing and enjoying the love of God, characterized by his perfect life-giving laws, expressed in intimate communion with him. The composition student asked us to play free jazz. What we played was free, but it was nonetheless governed by all kinds of musical laws and rules of harmony, melody and rhythm, not to mention a sense of other person centeredness that brought about beauty and expressed the freedom to explore. Ironically, what the composition student wanted was impossible. 
He wanted the freedom to create something from nothing, devoid of any musical laws. As creatures of the creator, we can only work with pre-supplied material and rearrange it. Only God can create something out of nothing. The composition student tried to achieve freedom through musical anarchy. All music, like every other created thing, is governed by laws that only God is over and not bound to. After all, the great J.S. Bach once said, harmony is next to godliness. It has occurred to me while reflecting on the subject of freedom that it's not about what rules or regulations are imposing their authority over us that we may want to free ourselves from. We all live under certain laws and regulations. Every citizen of every country of the world, even the conspiracy theorist who is skeptical of certain apps, governments, and even pandemics. So the real question is, who are we willing to submit ourselves to? Whose laws? Whose promises? Whose truth claims? And this is what the psalmist is singing to us. I will run in the way of your commandments, for you have set my heart free. This echoes the famous line, which you will all know, I was once lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Jesus once said to his followers, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth and the Truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. A well-known half quote from Jesus. But listen again to what he says that precedes it. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. In other words, to run in the commands of this life-giving word is true freedom. For the one who was a slave when called to faith in the Lord is the Lord's freed person. Similarly, the one who was free when called is Christ's slave, says Paul cryptically in his first letter to the Corinthians. All this leads me to one main reflection tonight, and that is, there's only one man who sets the captives free, and that's Jesus Christ, the risen saviour of the world.
thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you hear a difference? This is one, two, three times. Thank you. So, now a little bit English, not Australian English, but proper German English. <laughs> there is a lot from my heart I would like to say. I won't, but I would really thank from the bottom of my heart all the people here in the church who made this series possible. I felt a little bit like a saboteur when I asked them to host nine nights during this time over nine weeks, inviting people. We talked about all the corona regulations, but the spark to do something, I think, was the motivation, and it became a blessing, at least for us as musicians to play, and also, I think, for people who, and you, <laughs> who had time maybe to listen to music, but also think a little bit about this difficult word, freedom. That was my intention. And um, I hope we carry that with us, that despite difficult times, we might just do something and uh, document it even. So I want to thank all the people who made these evenings possible, that we can also enjoy it later on. And um, thank you for coming out tonight. And please join us, if you like, later on. The second thing I want to say is the next three pieces after this piece that was inspired by Byzantine Orthodox chants. Now we're looking at the power of freedom as being a transformative power in the world of butterflies. So we just, uh, we will perform three pieces inspired by the transformation of butterflies, as you all know from caterpillars, to amazing insects and we'll witness a little bit the flight to Mexico. So people try to protect the monarch butterfly, and this piece is dedicated to some of these people who initially started out as farmers and did not like the environmentalists coming in, taking away their freedom. But it changed their life to realize how fertile their ground became when they protected the land for the traveling butterflies in Mexico. Two of them were killed in the beginning of this year and that started for me the thought to dedicate this first piece, the monarch, of a cycle of pieces on butterflies to them. Let me just read a few words that I wrote down then because I feel it's the statement that I would like to make about freedom for myself. The beauty of nature inspires artists since many centuries. Today we're facing the truth that humanity, all of us, helps to destroy nature through manipulation and exploitation. We destroy our own inspiration, we destroy us. Artists who are inspired by nature in one way or the other are challenged how to respond to this destruction of nature, not only with their personal lives and their families and communities, but publicly through their art and craft. So I asked myself, what can be a peaceful and a unifying artistic response? For me, the answer is beauty, striving for beauty in creating, not in deconstructing, with sound instead of silence, and as an act of love instead in acts of polarizing anger. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Alone, together, on the meaning of freedom, let us pray. Lass mich den Weg verstehen, den deine Befehle weisen, so will ich reden über deine Wundertaten. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. Meine Seele weint vor Kummer. Richte mich auf nach deinem Wort. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Halte den Weg der Lüge fern von mir und begnadige mich mit deinem Gesetz. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. Den Weg der Treue habe ich erwählt und deine Bestimmungen vor mich hingestellt. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. Ich halte fest an deinen Zeugnissen. Herr, lass mich nicht zu Schanden werden. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord, let me not be put to shame. Ich laufe den Weg deiner Gebote, denn du machst meinem Herzen Raum. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. We thank you, Father, that what the psalmist wrote these many, many thousands of years ago is still true today. We thank you for your living word, Father. We thank you for life. We thank you for freedom that you have given us in Christ. We thank you, Lord, for all the beauty that we see and hear around us. We thank you for the gift of music. We thank you for your creation. We thank you for butterflies. Uh, we thank you for one another and the beauty that we experience in relationships that reflects your amazing 
beauty. And we thank you, Father, for simply being with us tonight. Your presence, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thank you, Father, for your presence and your authority. Thank you that we can trust you. Thank you, Father, for freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. In that freedom, we join together in the prayer of St. Augustine, which is on the screen. We join together. Lord, you created us, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Yours is the light of the day. Yours is the darkness of the night. Life and death are yours. I am yours, and I pray to you, let me sleep in peace, bless the coming day, and let me awaken to glorify you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 